combine small town roots with business savvy and you've got the Rural Rundown podcast. We're sharing our marketing and branding strategies, tips and tricks that rural businesses can use to educate, inspire and entertain their customers and to help you make sales and hit profit goals. So what does it take to go from your mom is your only fan to famous in a small town? Tune in and listen up as we feature business owners and organizations that are doing big things in their community and creating opportunities for generations to come. Hey, hey, it's another episode of the Rural Rundown podcast. I'm so excited to be here today with Rachel, my co-host, and we're going to talk all about what is branding and what is marketing. I know they seem like big and scary things, but they don't have to be, and that's why we're here, and that's why the Rural Rundown podcast exists. Rachel, how are you today? Doing pretty good. It's nice and sunny in Minnesota. How are you? Good. I'm good. It's sunny in Arizona, too. I'm glad you guys are getting some sun finally. Yeah, they it kind of dumped some snow on us this past weekend, but I think it's all going to melt. It's supposed to be like 50 or something, so here we go. Ooh, that's t-shirt and short weather. I know. <laughs> so today we're talking about branding and marketing. Um, and Rachel, I guess, kick us off a little bit and just tell us, like, what is marketing? For somebody that's just getting into business or doesn't really know where to start, what is it? So I think in simple terms, marketing is everything you do to drive demand for your business. So what's included in that? There's a lot of things. There's social media, there's advertising, there's website, there's sales processes, there's follow-up and retention, like everything that kind of goes into that. I almost call it like when we think about marketing, we think about like the campaigns we're going to run that can touch people several times. I mean, um, a lot of people have probably heard of this. They say on average, your customer needs to interact with you seven times. So sometimes I like to think about that with our marketing is what are the different avenues that we're going to do or the different things we're going to do to touch that customer that many times so they get to know us, like us, and trust us. I've heard that too, where somebody has to see you seven times um, and they have to build up that know, like, and trust factor. So could we say that the goal in marketing or the the goal of the know, like, and trust factor, um, if people know you, like you, and trust you, then you've succeeded at your marketing efforts? It's part of it. You know, you want people, for them to trust you, I mean, obviously you need to make sales. There's the different goals that are in with that, but for them to get to that point to make sales with you, yes, they have to trust you. So um, it's also about getting people, you know, what is your goal? Is it them to get them, get into your door, traffic into your store? Is it to your website? Is it, um, you know, talking to them in person? So it's kind of looking at what your unique business is. Let's say that you're a, um, a retail in a small town. You sell products. You want people to get into your door and meet you. So we're marketing to get people into the door. You can't, I mean, you can open a business and if you never market it, no one's going to come. Yeah. So what are different ways that people can market themselves? What are some avenues that they can take? The one that comes right to my mind, and this is what I do with all my clients, is your social media. Having a presence on the different platforms, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Um, it's free. We've talked about this in some other episodes, but that's one really easy way to market yourself. I also like to think about marketing. This gets a little more lofty, but when we're thinking about marketing our businesses, how do we go beyond like my marketing is my logo and my building and my name? There's much more to marketing than that. It's about what's the like why behind your business. This is something I like to ask my clients is let's show like that heart and that why behind your business. Why are you serving the community you do? What's the change or the impact you want to make? So it's kind of doing some of that work that helps us create those marketing messages that we can insert into any any platform we choose. So say um, you, you decide that um, your business and you want to change you serve women or something like that. Those are your ideal client. And you want them to change the way they think about themselves in a positive way. Let's say you like own a boutique or something. That's your heart behind your business. You want them to be confident um, and show their best, best self to the world. I have a couple clients who do that. Um, that's in every single 
advertising or marketing campaign we do is we're, we're running with that message, whether it's on the website, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram, or it's in an email we send or a mailer we send, that heart is always there because it's more than just buy my products. We're open. It's showing that human part of it, that emotional part of it. I think that's a great explanation. And you and you kind of dipped into advertising there as well and um, talking about different, different ways to advertise. Uh, is it fair to say that marketing and advertising are different? And if so, how are they different? They are different. I think I would get like a bunch of <laughs> rocks thrown at me if I said they were the same. I mean, when you look at the world of advertising, marketing, social media, branding, like they all do kind of have their own lane, but they all also tie together. So sometimes it can be really hard for people to separate. Just to go on a tangent, sometimes you'll see people like post for a job offer and it's literally lists out all those things. Like this business wants you to be able to do every single one of those things. And that's a pretty tall order because there's a lot to do in all of those different areas. But Marketing, I like to think of is the strategies that we're going to put in place to get people to know about your business, to like you, and then come in. Because you have to market. If you have a business, you have to get people to know about you, that you exist, what you stand for to even get them close to you. And advertising, I like to think is the way, okay, where are we putting our money? If we're going to spend money and time and effort, where what do those avenues look like? So print advertising, social media advertising. Um, radio advertising, those are kind of the ways, that's kind of how I view it. Yeah, I think that's an excellent way to to look at it. And like you said, like they all work together. Even when you're talking about finding your why, that's something that I have my branding clients do too because that's so important to us in building their brand. Like you said, it, it seems scary and daunting at first and I love how you put it like when you look at job postings and I think maybe when you look at job postings, I know I do sometimes, I'm like, God, I could never like accomplish all those tasks or like be that person to fill all of those roles um but once you once you like take a little a little look at it or once you're in the job doing it you realize like oh this is like a piece of cake because it's all it all ties in together it's all you know kind of like a trickle down effect that in my opinion anyways you have you know you have good branding you have good advertising you have good marketing you're going to make great sales so and and like you said that's kind of the end goal here right is that we we want to make a profit at doing this we want to make a living out of doing this um whatever your business may be. What you said too, just like with branding, you always look at the why and the emotion and the heart behind the business. And I think that kind of sets like good advertising away from like subpar or just what everybody else does. So it's, you're really elevating yourself and your brand in your marketing. Absolutely. One thing I have um, just recently launched I suppose um, is called the brand book and basically what it does is it lays the foundation for your branding but I dive into a little bit because because I think they are all tied in so closely together advertising marketing branding um, I dive into a little bit and explore a little bit into what their what their voice might be used in copy like part of their brand voice but also that helps them when they're trying to market themselves and they think about like how do I talk how do I I tell people about myself like how do I get my name out there um, we also dive a little bit into your why and your ideal audience um, in your ideal audience I kind of talk about how when we can figure out who that person really is and we can narrow it down to just one singular person even everything else kind of falls away and it makes it easy right to advertise to create products that you're selling even when you're just you're thinking about marketing to one person, one singular person, um, you're going to, you're going to get a lot further than trying to be like, oh, I'm marketing to 50 people and they all want different things. Like, no, one person, this is what you offer and this is why you do it the best. Um, and so I, I dive into each one of those things because I think it's important to at least have the foundation of all of those pieces that make up such a good business. Yeah, that's really key. And I think, I mean, I've seen what your brand book looks like and I feel like it totally sets someone up to feel like, okay, I have all these things now in place. I kind of understand myself, my business. Now I can apply it to, to my marketing, what I need to do for my goals 
in my business. So I think that's really great. Yeah. Do you have any um, tips or maybe like little takeaways that you might give somebody even on a consult call before they before they book with you? What are things people could start doing to to market themselves before they have the budget to kind of hire somebody to do their marketing for them? The first thing that I like to think about and I like to split up my marketing into like different kind of topics that help us create the content we need. So for example, the first one is branding. And I know we'll talk about this a little bit more, but that's what I've already been preaching about is the, you know, everything you said, it's the feel of who you are, what you stand for, your heart. And then I'll also kind of have like a pillar that's education. So what can you offer your ideal customer that um, are resources or things that um, will help them get to that next step. And then testimonials. So I like to think about highlighting our customers. There's a bunch of different ways we can do that. And then um, events. So are we someone who actually hosts in-person events? So I like to, sometimes I think it just helps to lay that out. So we have those, those different pillars and then underneath each of them, come up with the different things that your expertise or your business can cover. And that can kind of help you start building content. I'm comfortable talking about this, or these are events we're coming up that could be part of our marketing strategy. So it's almost doing this in a way to set yourself up for, I could call it a content calendar or your content push for the month. That's one way that I think makes it a little easier to break down. Because I think sometimes business owners can sit down and look at a blank piece of paper and look at a calendar and go, I have no idea how to market myself. Well, if you know what your goals are, you can kind of come up with a plan. And then um, I would say pick one social media platform to start talking about those things. So if that's one like piece of advice, and then with that, this is like another piece, but I really think video is another big focus that I work on with my clients. So kind of put yourself on that camera, get someone you know, someone to record you or do it selfie style if you have no one there. Um, Just start getting comfortable with it because honestly, the only way you're going to get better at it is by doing it over and over again. And you might say like, why would I put myself out on camera? Well, you're the face of your business. You're the heart behind your business. It all ties into what I was talking about before. You got to show up to as yourself. So those are kind of my tips. If you can't hire anybody to help you do that, those are things you can make for yourself priorities. And I would also say this is really, really easy to push back, right? Like they're not us. They're not marketing, branding professionals who we do this every day. We think about it every day. They have all million other hats to wear, but I really, really suggest they put a calendar appointment in their week that they're going to spend at least an hour doing this or more if they can, but at least doing something to move the needle forward. I think those are great tips. And even though we are branding and marketing professionals, we talked about it right before we before we hit record on this episode, that we tend to hide behind our client work um, by saying like, this is the things we do, we are doing in our business rather than actually showing up in our business and actually like getting out there. Um, so I am working on a prompt this month that is March Meet the Maker. And they're all prompts about like yesterday's was or this is today the second? Yeah. So yesterday's was um, just introducing the brand. So I got out there and introduced my brand as if it, it were placing a classifieds ad. Um, so not just me, but like my business, like introducing my business, what my business is all about. And then I'm unsure of what today's prompt is yet because I haven't been on social media to, to check what I need to be posting. But it's kind of taken me like out of my comfort zone a little bit to be like, I have to talk about myself. I have to get out there and I have to like push this stuff out there. But like you said, having a content calendar and having something set up to be like, this is what you fall back on. Even when you're confused about what you should be doing next, being able to push that kind of stuff out on social media, that makes it really helpful. So Brenna, I think the next thing is I'm going to turn the tables and we're going to talk to you and kind of pick your brain all about branding. So can you just give us... What is branding? What? How do you explain it to people who maybe have no idea what it is? I love this quote by Seth Godin, and I pulled it up. I've used this in some graphics before, and um, I use it in my brand book, actually. So 
he if you don't know who seth godin is he has amazing books that you should um look into he has a book called this is marketing and he talks all about marketing yourself marketing your business he has a few other books and a podcast um he's very knowledgeable but this is his quote on branding he says a brand is the set of expectations memories stories and relationships that taken together account for consumers decision to choose one product over another so Basically, in a nutshell, that's kind of what branding is. It's it's more than just a logo. It's more than your colors and your fonts and your visuals that you put out, which that's that's all people think it is. But it's really the emotions and expectations that we set out for customers. What makes people buy one thing over another thing? And one thing I talk about a lot with my clients that when we're going through the branding process is saying, hey, people don't buy from brands or businesses. Like you don't go buy Nikes because of the Nike swoosh. You go buy Nikes because of how the commercials make you feel. Other athletes that are wearing Nikes, you know, you know, Phil's story about how Nike even started, the whole concept behind it, right? We're not buying it because of because of the way it looks. Um, And half the time we probably don't even buy the shoes because of the way they look. And like I wear Nikes and I'll be honest, I don't know. I don't know why I don't wear any other kind of shoe. It's just like the shoe I've been wearing for a long time. I like the way they fit. I like the way that I run in them. I like the way that they work. The whole thing, you know, so how I got to that point, I'm not sure, but that's proper branding and consistent branding that's what brings your customers to the point where they are a true fan and they're always going to buy from you no matter what that's great I feel like Nike has been it's just such a good example over the years on how this they've stayed pretty relevant and people still they're a go-to shoe just like you said and you don't even know why that's like the epitome of a brand that has built themselves into your life that it's just there So that's really cool. Um, Next question for you is why do you brand your business? So the same thing about marketing, right? So we brand our businesses and we we develop consistent branding so that we can make sales essentially, right? And uh, something that I work with my clients on is building branding that pulls emotions from people. So I've just finished working with a few photographers And we are building their brand based off of their photos and their style of photos. They've really gotten to a point in their business where their style is is top notch. They found it. They're like in a stride of like, this is what I take photos of and this is who I represent. And so we build a brand surrounding that. And in that, we have captured more of the people that they want to serve, you know, whether it's companies or, or other brands, makers, businesses, or families, whatever it is, like those are the people that they want to attract. So we're always building a brand that attracts their ideal clients and makes their ideal clients emotional. So so emotional that they want to buy from them and have them as their one and only photographer. Um, you know, I've worked with people. I just finished working with a, a guy who runs a hay ranch and he's also a team roper. So we developed his brand to you know, attract more team ropers and some cutters, some reining horses, some, you know, kind of like really expensive kind of horses who, you know, want to be fed this kind of feed. And they're not the only person out there that has hay cubes, you know, like that. Uh, there's tons of farmers that can be producing hay, you know, alfalfa, alpha, they produce it different ways. Um, but this guy is living it every day. He's a team roper himself. His kids are rodeo kids. Um, You know, they're local to the community. That's what makes his brand unique and different is that he's out there every day saying, hey, this is who I am. I understand where you're coming from. And this is what we feed. And this is why. This is why we think it's great. Um, It doesn't, your product doesn't have to be unique. And even your brand itself, um, it should be unique, but it doesn't have to be the Taj Mahal, you know, it doesn't have to be something that, that is so unique that it's going to just like drive traffic crazily. Um, your brand is just ultimately an extension of you. I love that. I think you're exactly right. Um, and when you say it doesn't have to be, cause I think we think sometimes like, oh, if I'm really going to do all that work, it's got to be something that's crazy and 
like never seen before and that's just simply not true if the brand is an extension of you you are the only you in the world so it's going to be unique and it doesn't have to be like just it just has to have that element of you and that's what makes it so different and that almost makes it seem like it's easy <laughs> cuz yeah, but yeah. It, i mean i think it, it it can be we complicate it a lot we overthink it and if we just ran with that um that would make our lives a little easier when it came to trying to just hide behind a logo or the service or something you know it allows us to have some of that freedom which this seems a little scary and talking about logos you said you talk about hiding behind your logo um when we talk about a logo like that in itself should be unique to a to a point right that's where i'm saying like it doesn't have to be the taj mahal it doesn't have to be the best thing ever it doesn't have to be immaculate but each one of them like you said there's no there's only one you in the world and I in the brand book I kind of equate it to snowflakes right where like each snowflake is different and it has its own little quirk to it but at any given time there's a thousand snowflakes falling from the sky you know and they all look the same they're all white they're all about the same like size same shape kind of thing but they have their own intricacies that make them unique and make them different that's what your brand is like headed for um and talking about logos too because a lot of people are like well I had a logo or you know I I paid somebody twenty dollars for it and now I'm good to go um this that and the other thing and it's like well that's simply not true either and there's a point to where you can DIY your logo if you have a little bit of you know design experience and know what you're headed for but then there's also a point where it's like "Mm, maybe that's not the best option for you right so what we talk about in branding is a lot of like brand colors and color theory so when we look at when we think about the color red red usually means stop it's it's a Uh, color of power um it's pretty commanding um otherwise we look at blue blue is a color that we think about when we see blue we as humans think education we think learning we think um intellectual things sometimes we go like more technological we think of like techie kind of things all of these items that i've just talked about that a lot of people probably don't realize or don't even consider that the color red might be telling your customers stop danger warning don't come here versus the color blue which is inviting and says you can learn here i'm an education-based business people would probably never consider that when they're diying their logo that's why as a brand strategist i'm here to like help people and guide them through this thing to be like okay tell me what you want tell me what your business conveys who are the clients that we're trying to attract And then we're going to build a brand based on that. You could come to me as a business owner and say, well, my favorite colors are pink and green and I want my grip brand to be pink and green because that's an extension of me and that's who I am. Well, if your business is for cowboys, I'm not going to build you a brand that's pink and green because I'm going to tell you what, you're not going to attract a single client with a logo that's pink and green. All of that ties into the branding and and there's so much behind it, you know, designing a logo, having colors, using different fonts, even the fonts you use on your website can tell people to, to do different things or have different emotions. That's all part of branding. And when you get out there and you're looking for a brand designer, you obviously want to fit somebody that like meets your needs and we'll probably do an episode on that later. But something I want to touch on that I think is really interesting is going back to Nike and their logo. When they created their logo, I don't remember the year it was, but they paid a a logo designer $35 to design their swoosh. And at the time, $35 was equivalent to like $250, 2021, I believe. That's what the conversion was. So it was, you know, they paid well for it. You know, they, she built them a logo, but they were able to take that, turn it into a brand that's so much bigger. And then they set her up for life and they gave her shares in Nike. So they really like turned around and, and, and set this woman up, um, as far as like the work that she did for them. But that's what it took to start, you know, like Phil Knight, he hired a designer, he got somebody in there who could really help him out. And, and you can see the value of that and where it takes you in your business when you actually 
invest in yourself, invest in your business and invest in people that are doing things that you aren't comfortable with doing or maybe you don't know how to do. And so that's where, in my opinion, that's where branding and marketing and advertising specialists, they all come in because you mentioned it before, Rach, not everybody, not everybody does that on the daily. No. And I mean, that's why we have, we have jobs in this, this industry exists because we, uh, we, we know, we, we know what we live it every day and we love it. So we are able to like got help others and guide them into how they can apply these things to their business. Um, last question I have for you on this, Brenna, similar to the one you asked me, if someone is like thinking about, oh, wow, I need to really start building my brand. Where would you have them start or make it simple if they're not really ready to do like everything, but they just need to start? Well, I'm going to like shamelessly self, uh, self-promote self myself here. Um, I really think that you should start with the brand book I created. And, and here's why. It's 27 pages and it full out walks you through how to build the foundation of your brand. So we take you through like a SWOT analysis and you kind of figure out where your strengths and weaknesses are. And that sets you up for figuring out like where you should be hiring people and where you can maybe take care of things on your own. Um, like a I said earlier, we walk through finding the ideal client, really like honing in on that, narrowing down. Um, we come up with a mission statement. We come up with I help statements, which helps you build like your bios and all of your social media platforms and start like honing in and crafting that elevator pitch of like, this is what I do. This is why I do it. And this is who I do it for. Um, and then we walk you through you know, social media, we just touch on that a little bit in general of like where you should be showing up on social media, why social media matters. We talk about a a bunch of different demographics and like where the money's at and like what types of people are using social media. Um, And then we really just kind of lay out the foundation of like, who am I? What do I do? And why do I do it? And then what kind of products are you going to offer in your business as well? And and like I said, we kind of finger off and, and touch on all these points of how you're going to market your business, um, what you know, what is the real passion and the real why behind your business? What's the drive that's going to always keep you going? And, and to me, that's the important parts of branding yourself is figuring out all that work on the inside that's going to you know, create relationships with clients and create emotions and and make them buy from you. Again, really honing in on that no like, and trust factor on each one of them. Um, and then, you know, if worse comes to worst and you really just need a logo for, you know, whatever reason that you think you need a logo, there are options you can go out there and, and you can make logos yourself I wouldn't pay somebody $20 to do a logo, but I would go out there and actually try to figure out how to design it yourself after you've done that work of building the foundation and thinking about like, all right, who do I serve and what are the things that are going to attract them? Like you said, if you absolutely just need to start and you do kind of make your own logo, I think there's always in the future when you can or you can afford it, talking to a brand um, strategist because you will be amazed that they will take your your like concept and just whip it out and it'll be perfect for you. I think it's so cool to watch with you and like other people I know who are graphic designers or do different things like this. It's always so fun for me to see what you guys create because it's amazing. Like it really is just, it up levels everything and it makes it very professional and uh, yeah. So don't, if you can't do it now, Think about it for the future and um, have it in your back pocket. And just knowing the importance importance of it, I think is like a key takeaway that we kind of wanted to share. Yeah. And I think with anybody that you're going to hire, um, see if they have consult calls or see if they have, like I just opened up coffee chats with a, a lot of my clients where on Fridays they can set up a call with me and we can just, it can be completely laid back and we just talk about your business and struggles you have. And I can just almost be a sounding board or, you know, you can pick my brain on stuff find designers and find, you know, marketing professionals, advertising professionals who maybe offer something like that. If you're just getting started and you don't know where to start or like what to do, see if you can book a consult with somebody. Even if it's like a minimal cost and you've got to pay like 25 to 50 dollars 
a consult would really be beneficial to people who who don't know where to start or they feel like they're struggling um, because sometimes that outside perspective and having a professional perspective will really just launch you in a direction that you didn't even know was possible. Yeah, that's great. I actually had a client who worked with me and paid me for about a month and I feel like just that time with me, she was able to kind of understand the campaign structure that I was building for her and now she felt competent to do it herself. And will she do it by herself forever? I don't know. Probably depend on what what traffic's coming in and pay and everything like that. But I do think, like you said, meeting with someone can kind of give you that like that start that you need or that inspiration you need to kind of set it up. Get yourself set up. That would be another takeaway. Get yourself set up to do this. I think you work kind of the same way I do, Rachel. And I was talking with another designer yesterday. I love getting people to the point where they can take it and run with it and do it on their own. Logo designs that I build for people, um, I really like to be like, all right, here's the deal. Here is all these files that I've given you. They're all colored. They're all named. They're all, you know, you have different files. Um now you can take that and you can do whatever you want to do with it. And how I set people up for that is showing them mock-ups, right? So um, for our friends, Colin and Sabrina, I just recently did a logo design for them and I showed them a mock-up of what it could look like if they wrapped their truck and what the logo might look like there. Um, so really kind of like push people because sometimes other people aren't good at like using their imagination so I think us as creatives like we can push people and be like look at what this would look like on the side of a semi-trailer you know <laughs> like make them dream big and see what that's gonna look like and but then also use it in some real life applications for them too I do a lot of like apparel t-shirt um hat mock-ups for clients um so they can kind of like see that logo and see what that would look like. In short, I guess branding and marketing, it all ties in together, but it's all separate and there's lots of moving parts. And I hope we did a little bit of justice to explaining um, a little bit about what we do in the industries that we serve. I think I always kind of like glaze over the top because otherwise I can get too nerdy and go way too deep into any one portion of what I do. Yeah, if you have any questions, you know, you can always reach out to us if you need more mm-hmm. clarity. And I'm sure in future episodes, we'll probably get better at talking about what we do and sharing it in more of a way that everybody can clasp on to. Um, one thing I was going to ask you, I feel like when you were talking about Phil Knight, you did you read Shoe Dog? I didn't read Shoe Dog, no. Oh, you just know the story. Okay. Yeah. I read, well, Shoe Dog is basically, it's his book that tells that story. So, and I really liked it. I, because I feel like he told it in a way that wasn't, like, it is for marketing professionals and people in our fields, but also, like, if you just want to, like, hear the story of Nike, it's really written in a different way than any other business book I've read. And I love the story. Like, the examples you shared fit right into everything we're trying to say. So, I love that example about Nike. I think it's so, um, I know it from you know just being a designer and I struggle a lot with like charging my worth and being in a spot where I feel like I'm charging enough that I I'm getting paid what I you know for what I'm putting out but then at the same time being a low enough cost that people can kind of like reach me with their budgets um because I think that's another thing and like I would love to to do an episode on this another thing that people kind of like well why should I pay somebody to do that kind of stuff When I see my clients like just take off and rock it after a branding session and after we've done something like that to me is like the best feeling in the world. And I think for a lot of them too, they realize like, okay, yeah, like this, you know, I really like took this and ran with it. Another example is Brianna Hoff teaser, uh, who you went to high school with and then I met in college. When I started my business, she was actually one of my very first clients that I ever had and we designed a couple of logo sets for her and she has just taken that and run with it and she's sent me pictures of she's had friends like laser cut her logo out and she's put it on the front of a um, register when she goes to different craft shows and stuff and I'm like man it blows my mind that you love this thing so much you want to put it on things and that's how people recognize you and in the whole shebang right like it's, it's wild, and I think when people pay professionals, marketing, advertising, branding, whatever it may be, they see the return on that, and then they start to realize, oh, 
this is I'm making way more money than what I paid this person for. Um, so I think when we think about these things, we think about our budgets and what we can afford and what we can't afford. Instead of thinking about what we can afford right now, thinking about what are we paying for in the future? What is our future return on this? Yeah, that's great because when I translate that to like the marketing side of of working with my clients, that's exactly it. Like up front, it's like, what what is this going to do for me? But then they see it. If you run like consistent marketing, let's say paid ads on social media, you're putting your face out there, people start saying, hey, I saw you on Facebook and you're everywhere on there and you become known and it becomes like a thing that you're on there and you're seen and they start saying, oh yeah, you're that small business owner. You get recognized and it doesn't come right away. But like you said, a couple months, you've built that up. You've built that audience up. And if you stopped, you might have it come, you know, it might trickle on for a little bit longer. But if you stop, then it it does eventually die. That's why it's something you have to keep. It's a muscle you have to flex, but it's worth it in the end. It is time. It is money. It is effort. If you hire somebody, yes, that's another investment, but it's worth your time. And that's why we get paid to do what we do. So my last tip that I think I have for the day, and then and then we can kind of wrap this up, is if you absolutely have no idea where to start and you don't know um, who to turn to or if you can even find a marketing professional or branding professional in your area, is to pick up a book or download an audio book. Um, like Rachel was talking about Shoe Dog, how he's written it in such a way that it was like no other book she read. To me, that reminded me of 50 Cent's uh, book, and I think it's called Hustle. Maybe that's all the all the name of it. Oli bought it. We listened to it as an audiobook. 50 Cent talks about his journey of entrepreneurship, starting as um, a 15-year-old selling dope in the streets to being a rapper, a multimillionaire, billionaire, and, and being the um, producer of all these TV shows and putting out all these albums. And he really kind of walks you through that whole entrepreneurial journey of of what he did to get there and the mindset he had to have to be there and and now the mindset to stay there as rap music changes and as he gets older and kind of like falls out of that scene and becomes irrelevant how he's evolved and pivoted and changed into producing TV shows and kind of been in that space. So books are amazing. That's my like last tip. If you could, I mean, think about it. If you could have a, a shelf full of mentors and pull one down every time you got stuck and needed help, how amazing would that be? And that's that's exactly what some of these books can be. I love that. I'll have to check that out. That sounds super interesting. It was a good one. And you have to do the audiobook because I mean, like nothing's better than listening to 50 Cent like tell you about his life. So for a while, Oli thought he was a rapper after we listened to the audiobook. I assure you he's not. i love it well i hope this conversation was beneficial for all of our listeners and that maybe you got a better idea at what marketing and branding is and maybe a little bit better at what we do but if you still have questions i encourage you to follow us on social media first of all at the rural rundown on instagram and on facebook but then also you can follow both of our businesses to get a better insight in what we do i am at brenna ramson on instagram be Creative by Brenna on Facebook. Rach, where can people find you? I am December Day Creative on Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. Well, I hope to see you guys on the social medias. And until next time, we will catch you in the next one. Well, that's it for this episode of the Rural Rundown Podcast. Thanks for listening. You can always find us on social media at the Rural Rundown. And if you really liked this episode, we would totally love it if you gave us a review and gave us a little rating. It would mean so much to us. And for more small town roots and business savvy, catch us on the next one.